Uh, Madam, shall we start now? Uh, yeah, sure. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now that majority of us have joined. Recording in progress. Uh, with the upcoming conferences, the medical faculty research community of the Kalama Medical Faculty decided it was timely to carry out a session on creating an effective oral or poster presentation. Our guest speaker today is Dr. Buddhini Herat Benora. She is a research fellow attached to the Center for Mental Health Melbourne School of Population and Global Health, University of Melbourne, Australia. Dr. Denora studied at Visaka Vidyalaya and she obtained her MBBS, MSc and MD in Community Medicine from the University of Colombo. She has also worked as a Registrar in Community Medicine in the Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo. She has a good track record for academic achievements, having published three articles in international journals and demonstrating research expertise in her discipline. She was awarded several research awards, including the first runners up for the best scientific paper and best poster at the annual academic sessions of the Sri Lankan College of Community Physicians in 2017, the Young Investigators Travelers Award in the 50th and Golden Jubilee Conference of the Asia Pacific Academic Consortium for the Public Health for public health held in Malaysia in 2018, the Dr. HM SSB Herath Research Award for the year 2021 for evaluation of an intervention to reduce occupational stress among secondary teachers in the District of Colombo at the annual academic sessions of the College of Community Physicians of Sri Lanka in 2021 and many more. I now invite Dr. Buddhini Herat Benwara to carry on with today's session. Over to you, Madam. Hello, everyone. I, I think uh, you all can hear me. Can you all hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, now, how can I share my presentation? Give me a minute. Uh, can you see now? Yes, madam. Yes. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Dr. Buddhini Denuvara. I'm a research fellow attached to University of Melbourne, Australia. Today, actually, we are going to talk about how to create an effective oral or post presentation. And actually, when Dr. Yasasvi asked me to do a presentation uh, during the weekend, I was very happy because uh, this is a very important area where you all have done uh, your research and when you are preparing to present your research in an academic conference. Uh, this is, I think this is your first time uh, that you all are presenting. Uh, I really appreciate your effort because uh, usually when we do our MSc, MD uh, studies, uh, we, used to, uh, we used to publish these things. But during the medical uh, uh, faculty uh, days, if you are trying to present your research in an academic conference, actually it is really good. Uh, you will get a good idea about uh, how these sessions are conducted and what are the questions they are asking. And uh, you can uh, gather a lot of information and you can gain a lot of experience uh, by presenting in these uh, international conferences and college sessions. Actually, I have a lot of experience in this area where I have uh, won a lot of awards. Uh, I will share my experience with you all. Actually, it is very rewarding. So uh, for you to uh, win a research award, actually, you have to prepare for the uh, oral presentation very well. Otherwise, uh, uh, with this stipulated time, if you are not well prepared, you can't win, win an award. Actually, uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the student level, uh, award winning, uh, award winning is a good thing, but uh, getting ready to uh, participate in this uh, uh, event is also a major uh, event for you all at your age and I really appreciate your effort. Uh, actually, I worked as a uh, registrar in uh, Kalam faculty. I think I may have uh, got some of your statistics and epidemiology. 
but uh, I also had uh, three research groups and one group uh, did the uh, presentation, uh, I think oral or post presentation in uh, uh, faculty sessions. So actually when you are doing a research, it's very important that you publish your research. Otherwise the effort you put uh, to do a research will be a waste because uh, when, uh, the scientific uh, community should know that this kind of research has been conducted. Although your sample size is like 100 or 105, but still you have some uh, research evidence. You have filled that research gap. So you have to show this world that you have uh, done uh, uh, good research and these are your findings. So without do, uh, participating in these ses academic sessions, you can't get that research experience. So it is very important that you participate these events uh, actively and uh, try to do your best. Actually, uh, although you are a student, you, you still have a star chance to win an award in a session if you present your uh, uh, findings very effectively. Now I will teach you how to do this uh, because uh, there are some ways that we have to uh, uh, prepare before doing this oral and post presentation. So as you all know, uh, preparing for an oral presentation is similar as, uh, and, uh, now you, I think you all have submitted the abstract. It is the same methods that we use to uh, present our, uh, or do the oral presentation. You have the background, then methods, then results, and then you go to the conclusion. Same, uh, 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 same sequence will be there. So it's always uh, following this path. So when you are getting ready to uh, do an oral presentation, you have to uh, follow some steps. You have to plan, practice, and present. So there are a few steps. First, you have to review your guidelines. Then you have to write your uh, notes and then you have to prepare your visual aids and you most importantly you have to practice your talk and then you have to uh, prepare for your questions we will discuss this one by one and this is a discussion if you uh, want to ask any questions you can ask from me at any time actually uh, i did my first uh, oral presentation in a co college of college of community physicians uh, sessions and as a MSc student, so you all are better than me because you all are going to present as medical students. So it's a very good uh, starting uh, point. So um, I wish you all, all the best and try to grab all the points that uh, we are discussing. And if you have any questions, we can uh, discuss those as well. So first of all, you have to review the guidelines. The planning is very important. I think I think you all are going to present to the to our college sessions and SLMA sessions. So uh, the guidelines are different. I mean, uh, there there are some conferences where uh, they have uh, it as a, a hybrid event. I mean, uh, uh, the uh, actual participation and uh, they have uh, online uh, participation as well. Some uh, conduct it as a full virtual event. Actually, uh, when I award, uh, I got the award in 2021, it was held as a virtual event due to Corona. And uh, there are some events, uh, uh, some sessions, uh, they conduct it physically. So you have to go there and present. Uh, when I presented my MSc uh, uh, research findings, uh, I, I went there only physically and presented the uh, research findings. So it, it depends on the era and a type of the conference that you have to get ready. I mean, when you, uh, I think uh, in 2021, when we had our college sessions as a virtual event, uh, we were given uh, seven minutes to present our oral presentation and three minutes for the discussion. And for the post presentation, we were given, I think, uh, three minutes uh, uh, for the uh, presentation and uh, like two minutes for the discussion. Likewise, the guidelines change. So depending on the academic session, so you have to know uh, now what are the guidelines, how much time is given for me. So according to that, you have to plan your presentation. 
And also you have to think about your audience. How much do they know about your research topic? Now, if you go to a, uh, academic sessions uh, in, uh, of, I mean, our, our field, uh, when the College of Community Physicians are holding a ses academic sessions, uh, you should know that uh, we are experts in methods. So uh, we will dig into method section. I mean, how did you choose your sample size? How did you, uh, why did you select this uh, study population? So how did you collect data? Any, um, uh, like any problems you had during data collection and what are your findings and how, how are you going to uh, implement these findings? Uh, likewise, we will direct, uh, uh, we will ask you about those uh, methods, uh, questions mostly uh, in our sessions. Uh, I mean, if you go to a SLMA session, there will be a lot of consultants, professors there. It's like uh, the audience is very different. There will be CCPs, there will be physicians, there will be microbiologists, uh, there will be um, pediatricians. So the audience is different. So if you are, according to your research topic, you will get different uh, uh, questions from this audience. So before, when you're planning, you have to know your uh, audience and uh, uh, be familiar with the uh, sessions. And uh, you have to pay attention to your time. I mean, how much uh, I, you can explain the uh, theory. Uh, if you are going to talk about, uh, I mean, one definition for a long, uh, taking a long, period of time, then you will not have enough time to pre uh, present your results. I mean, when you, if you describe your method section a lot, then you will not have enough time to present the results. So or whenever you are doing a, a presentation, you have to plan it very well and uh, you have to gather relevant information. I mean, if you, if you have done about asthma, so you have, you have to read about, read around that topic. So because the, or you may get questions from the audience. There may be physicians, there may be pediatricians. So they may ask some small questions from you. Uh, anyway, you don't have to worry a lot, a lot about um, uh, answering these, to, these questions because whatever uh, the questions they ask, uh, they will ask only from your research study because you have done it by yourself. You should be very confident and competent in even answering these questions. So if you plan well, you can face these uh, uh, questions very uh, effectively. And the next uh, important thing is you have to write your notes. I have uh, given in this uh, right hand side what I do. Uh, actually, my MSc supervisor was Nalika, madam. You may know madam is in the WHO and my MD supervisor was uh, Dulani, madam. And whenever I get ready uh, for these oral presentations, I always share my slides with my supervisor and ask their opinion because uh, they, may, they might uh, uh, give suggestions which may improve my slides. And also, uh, when I presented my first uh, oral presentation, uh, Nalika Madam always told me that you have to stick to your script. Now, I have given, shared my script. So you can see, uh, now I have, uh, 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 I already wrote my narration and that is exactly what I am going to say in each slide. I will never deviate from this because otherwise I will not have enough time to present all my research findings. And first you have to start introducing yourself and you have to introduce your supervisors. And then you have to introduce your terms. I mean, if you are talking about occupational stress, you have to tell what it is. Uh, my MSc was on health literacy. So I have to introduce that term. What is health literacy? Otherwise, my, uh, my presenter, um, um, others can't uh, understand what I'm talking about. So uh, first you have to introduce yourself. Then you have to define uh, these terms. You can't use medical jargon there. And you have to end, end with a conclusion and then you can ask, uh, uh, invite uh, them to ask any questions from you. Now, you, when you see this, I, I, can, I have written clearly in slide one, 
I am going to say good morning. I am Dr. Buddhini Denuvara, Senior Registrar in Community Medicine attached to MRI. This is my MD thesis on this. So my supervisors are these. So uh, that is all what I am going to tell in this uh, first slide. Then I go to second slide. I will read out this definition which I have written earlier. Then I put the third slide. I, I, I will share, share with you my uh, oral presentation, which I did for our sessions. Then you can understand. Although there are so many information in my slide, I will not talk about all the things that is there. When, when I'm going to talk about effects, I will only tell, tell there, are physical, the, the, there are physical illnesses, psychological illnesses, and unhealthy lifestyles. In the slide, I give examples for these, but I am not going to talk about those things because I don't have enough time. So if you plan ahead, uh, writing all the uh, important information, then you know what to tell exactly in that slide. So that is why I tell you the planning is very important. And uh, then, uh, you will have enough time to pre present your uh, findings effectively. And uh, the other one is preparing visual aid. Uh, that, that is also a very uh, important in planning. So visual aids help you to communicate effectively uh, to your audience. And uh, you can use diagrams and uh, they should be large and clear. So you should not put too much information on one slide. And... Um, Pictures must be clear and readable from the distance. Now, if you see uh, this slide, this is regarding health literacy and my occupational stress. Occupational stress is a balance uh, between this uh, stress and coping skills. So, if you are putting an image, by seeing that image also, you can get an uh, idea about uh, what I'm going to talk. So, uh, likewise, you can. Uh, find some uh, pictures and put it to your presentation, but don't put too much because uh, uh, it will be crowded, the slide will be crowded. So you can uh, use the relevant uh, uh, pictures to uh, show the meaning that you're uh, going to uh, present. And uh, uh, there are some uh, tips about uh, making those uh, PowerPoint uh, presentations. So you have to uh, use a large font. I mean, when you're looking, uh, sometimes uh, you're presenting to a large audience and if the text is uh, like uh, smaller than 24, uh, the uh, back row people can't see the presentation. So you have to avoid uh, this small, smaller text. And also you have to use clean, uh, uh, typeface, I mean, Arial, Times, New Roman, likewise, whatever the font you're using, it should be a standard one. And then you can use bullet points uh, uh, to uh, gi uh, give your points, but uh, you should not uh, uh, write the whole sentence there. I mean, you can use like six bullet per slide and you can use contrasting colors. And I think uh, uh, special effects uh, can be used whenever necessary to make a point. Otherwise, you don't have to use those things. And the other one is, the major one is that you have to practice. Uh, the more you practice, the more you feel confident. Uh, you have first you have to practice alone and then you tie in your presentation. Now, if usually uh, you will be given like seven minutes to present and three minutes for discussion. So uh, you have to uh, finish your presentation in seven minutes. Then you can ask, uh, you can present this to a friend and ask to comment about it. Sometimes, mostly you will be given a mic to present, but in, uh, if there are uh, no mics, you should be audible to the whole audience. So uh, you, your friend can comment on your tone, loudness, likewise. And then you have to be careful about your grammar, pronunciation, those stuff. So if, when you practice, you become very confident 
and you can go there and present at a stretch. So uh, the audience also know now uh, you have uh, you are well prepared. So uh, the presentation will go smoothly. So for that you have to uh, practice this. Practice. So the other thing is uh, effectively presenting. When you are uh, going to the uh, stage, you have to speak with confidence. You have to make eye contact with the audience and uh, you, you have to avoid reading from the screen. When you practice several times, you may not need the script to uh, present. Then you can explain your graphs and uh, emphasize on the important information and you always have to avoid medical jargon. If, if I'm going to use like occupational stress, I have to introduce that term first and you can relax and uh, do the presentation well and then you have to at the end uh, you have to acknowledge the people who supported your research uh, and the uh, last uh, uh, segment is preparing for the question now here you can predict some of the questions uh, that you will get from the audience uh, like, like uh, usually they ask uh, uh, if you have the conclusion so, so what are you how are you going to implement this research finding so like i said uh, uh, they can ask about your methods uh, how, how you do uh, the data collection actually and what is also some technique and were there any difficulties that you face you did data collection like like what is uh, you can take the answers and can get ready to answer, answer this question. So, so uh, I, I will uh, now share my uh, oral, oral presentation to you all. So, you, so can, you can see, see actually, actually how to present this uh, oral, oral presentation. You know? Can you hear now? Recording stopped. Uh, not yet, madam. We can hear you, but not the video. Madam, can you share the sound? Like share with sound? Why is it not? Uh... Madam, can you try like uh, to stop share and then start to like reshare and share with sound something?
Can you hear now? Um, it's still sharing, madam. Sorry, can you hear now? No, madam, but uh, it's okay, madam. Oh, no, if you can't hear, there's no point. No? Why is that? I will show you. I will show you. Uh, this, uh, from from uh, slide to slide. Recording in progress. Can you see this now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, then I'll go uh, slide by slide and explain it to you because you can't hear my voice. Now, in the first slide, uh, uh, you have to uh, talk, give the introduction and then uh, you have to uh, introduce your uh, medical terms and then you can talk about uh, if effects of occupational stress and then organizational consequences of occupational stress. Then you have to talk about the justification. Why did you do this study? And then your objective. And then you go to the methods. There you talk about your study design and your study setting, just as uh, you have uh, uh, given the details in your abstract. Uh, the same uh, sequence, then uh, what is uh, defined by your cluster, then your inclusion criteria, uh, then your exclusion criteria, and uh, then uh, you can talk about the sample size, and uh, then usually we give uh, a flow chart, uh, how you selected this uh, study sample, then you can talk about your outcome indicators, and then you talk about data analysis, how you, uh, you use that SPSS version 21, and then what is the test you used, chi-square test, GE analysis, uh, this is my MD thesis, so I did Wilcoxon sign, sign rank test and maximum chi-square chi test, likewise, whatever the uh, uh, test you use for uh, data analysis, and you have to talk about ethical clearance, and then uh, uh, usually we talk about pre-intervention assessment, if it is a, a, a intervention, uh, then implementation of this intervention and what happened during the post-intervention assessment, and then logistics uh, arrangements. And then, um, uh, because this is a cluster randomized study, so it is an intervention study. So what did we do in the intervention? Then uh, what are the organizational modifications? Then we talk about the results. What is the response rate? And what you found? There was a significant reduction in stress. And this rate, effects, effective coping, and adequate, adequate physical activity. Likewise, your, what are your uh, research findings? And then you talk about the conclusion, and then you give the recommendations. And then you have to talk about limitations as well. And then you have to uh, do the acknowledgement. And at the end, you have to give the references. This is a one, one study. And then I will sh uh, show you another one. Actually, 
actually uh, that was my md study that is a bit too much for your level but uh, i will show my uh, msc study that was on uh, health literacy like a descriptive study i think you all have done similar studies Can you see this health literacy uh, presentation? Yes, uh, now, similarly, uh, first uh, slide be, uh, will be about your title and your supervisor. About uh, why you selected this uh, study, your justification. Uh, uh, the justification and then you give the objectives and methods are very simple like study setting this is a descriptive cross-sectional study and study uh, study uh, design and study setting and What is the study population, inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria, sample size. Now you can see it's very clean and clear. Now it's very, you don't write a lot uh, in one slide. You can put bullets and uh, give your points here. Then sampling technique. Now you can say two stage cluster sampling uh, using PPS, but if they ask you any question, you can uh, explain what do you mean by this so what is a cluster group of 40 teachers working in a uh, in the same school so likewise uh, you have to explain one by one then you have to you can give a figure about uh, how you selected your study participants then uh, something about your study instrument what you had in your instrument tool uh, section one about your uh, general information and text section two about your health literacy assessment. And then uh, you can uh, talk about uh, your study instrument, how many questions you had and uh, consensual validity, like uh, how you validated uh, this questionnaire or you used the already validated questionnaire. Actually, this was a uh, health literacy, literacy was measured first time in Sri Lanka using an international tool so i had to uh, do a consensual validity uh, and how you did your pre-test and then what is this concept and how you you scored this uh, tool and ethical review and then you, how you analyze this data and then you describe your results so likewise, uh, what is your limited health literacy? At a glance, you can uh, know the results. <coughs> then your conclusions and your recommendations, limitations and acknowledge and the reference. This is the uh, usual way of doing an oral presentation. So I will actually share this health literacy presentation with you all. So uh, you can have an idea about how to uh, prepare your slides. And uh, do you have any questions from this up to now? You can ask any question if you have, or else we can uh, go to the uh, post presentation.
That was a really insightful session, madam. Thank you very much. Uh, now I would like to open the floor for the Q&A session. Uh, you can, uh, you're all free to unmute your mic and ask, or you can even type it on the chat box. Madam? 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 We can hear you, Pumul. Madam, right, uh, can you not declare the research for people? If we had a lot of references, are we uh, required to add all those references in the uh, presentation? Uh, can you repeat it? It wasn't very clear. Are we required to add all the references that we added in our initial report in the presentation at the end? Excuse me, madam, can you hear us? Uh, I have a mu uh, unmute. <laughs> I had to uh, unmute. Sorry. Uh, actually, you asked about references. So I will show you. Uh, At the end of the presentation, you can put uh, your references like in a very small font, like in two slides, but you just put, uh, you just say these are my references and you just pass the slide. You don't talk anything about this, but uh, as a, uh, if, if it is a, a completed presentation, you need to have references. If you don't put it, uh, the judges will think that you forgot to put it. And also, your acknowledgement also, uh, now you have to put, uh, put it uh, there without uh, forgetting to uh, include this slide. Uh, usually, if we uh, give marks for your overall presentation, we check whether you have completed all the relevant uh, uh, in, uh, sections. So, it's better to, to include it, but you don't talk about those things. You just, just Show the slide and, and uh, for the acknowledgement, you can, can specifically tell the names and uh, very few uh, words regarding that. And, and, and I mean, you can have a lot of research and research and then also talk about, and, and also also talk about if you have had time, let them show that and tell the other that you have had already published your uh, research. research. So, yeah. Uh, I add a lot of value to your presentation because you have already published what you have done. So, so uh, I mean, after you, you uh, after the thank you slide, you can prepare some more slides. I mean, if they ask about consensual validity. This is the slide I have prepared, but I, but I don't show this to anyone. If they ask uh, any questions regarding that, then I have that slide, so I am prepared to present that. Usually they won't ask uh, uh, hard questions, but uh, but it is uh, uh, good if you can uh, have uh, some extra slides after the thank you. Uh, and uh, 
get ready for your additional question. Um, this is an additional uh, tip, I think. <laughs> okay, uh, any more questions? Madam, seems like there are no more questions. Shall we move on to the poster section of your talk? Yeah, sure. Now, uh, this is uh, regarding the post presentation. It is also important as the uh, uh, oral presentation because you th this also has the same uh, free uh, same uh, flow that uh, you will have for the oral presentation. Like for presentation, I think in SLMA we had only three minutes to present and then uh, two minutes discussion. Likewise, uh, if it is a virtual event, uh, you can uh, video the presentation and send it. Uh, and, and in the Q&A session, you can join online and answer the questions. Uh, if it is a... a uh, uh, physical uh, conference so you have to be there and uh, you you have this poster held and you have to present your uh, poster to them i mean this is my msc poster uh, i got the best uh, poster presentation for this now you can see although it is very uh, small here it's a huge poster printed uh, in a uh, in a very big uh, uh, format so anybody could see this. Uh, so uh, what makes a good uh, poster? So this information should be readable. Uh, title sh is short and draw the interest. Text is clear and to the point. You can use bullets, numbering, heading, headlines. And <coughs> you can use graphics as well. Here also you can see me. I have used uh, pictures here and uh, consistent and clean layout and you have to use uh, you can uh, 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 you have to put your uh, references at the end and your name and uh, your institutional affiliations those things those things should be there i think i shared a slide with you all uh, this is the same um, post i made uh, usually how we make this post It is a, yeah, now I have shared I shared with you all my uh, slide so you can remove my uh, title and put your title here and uh, likewise uh, the background color all these things you can change but the format is uh, uh, like similar so you can use uh, that format to create your poster and you can give it to uh, outside and get the uh, print out. Uh, it's very easy to make this uh, poster presentation. And here, uh, this is uh, one of the examples from my selling me. Uh, they also had a, a format like uh, what is the size. Uh, this was a virtual uh, conference. So we had to do uh, record. Uh, this is this was presented as a slide. And then uh, we have to present this within uh, three minutes. And uh, in a uh, physical uh, conference, uh, they will come to you. There will be two judges uh, usually. So you have to be prepared and you have to use this post as a visual tool. And you have to have eye contact uh, with the uh, judges. And uh, you have to present it, it in a logical way. And uh, uh, then you have to be get uh, ready for your questions. It's uh, it's similar to the oral presentation. It goes in the same sequence, like fr starting from the backgrounds, then you talk about methods, then you talk about your results, and then talk about your conclusions, and then your recommendations. So it's very easy, the same method. And uh, this also you have to practice and practice and practice. Otherwise, when you go there uh, and just uh, start presenting, it will not. Uh, work well i mean when when the examiners come, uh, when the judges come there 
you have to be very um, active and uh, very confident and competent and you should present it as you as uh, uh, and showing that uh, you're well prepared so with starting from the background you can uh, introduce the terms and then likewise uh, you can present it very well uh, i mean if you present it clearly uh, the audience can understand very well so usually uh, if they understand very well uh, there will be less questions actually because whatever you present they can uh, grab this information but if you don't present it well then there are so many questions because there are so many unclear uh, things uh, in between your presentation so you should be very uh, uh, very uh, very well uh, practiced and very well uh, very well organized to present your findings otherwise now if they if the judges come there and if they can't understand what you're telling then they will ask so many questions because because they couldn't understand what you're telling so that's uh, so for to prevent that uh, you can get ready for the poster uh, very well uh, i mean i will show you uh, this is my uh, APAC uh, conference, uh, we had it in Malaysia. I presented my MSc research. It, this was an international conference where the public health specialists from the whole world participated. Actually, our Indica sir is a very big person there. So I got this um, uh, Young Investigators Research Award, GITA Award, with uh, uh, th thousand US dollars. Uh, it covered all my expenses, I mean, hotel stay and everything. So, uh, and uh, it was given only for five uh, best people in the world. And then when I went there, I had, I did my oral presentation and I received the best oral presentation as well. So it was also given only for the best five pres presenters from the world. So it's very tough. I mean, there are so many uh, consultants professors also present in there so likewise so if you are although you are a student if you present your research findings well and the, if, if the audience can understand what you're talking then you can win the award i mean i put this to encourage you all i mean there are cash rewards as well so thousand us dollars is a big amount in 2018 for a student, a MSc student. So likewise, our dean madam also participated. Likewise, if you if you excel in this research world, you can go up to the up to very high. You can go up to very high levels. So, if, I mean, I started from a MSc. Now you all are starting from your undergraduate level. That is why I am very happy to help you all. So you can develop these skills when you present day by day, and then when you uh, practice very well you can reach to the maximum level and then uh, in my msc uh, uh, research uh, we had this uh, college sessions and i got the best oral presentation as well as the best post presentation they have they gave uh, best oral presentation in uh, different categories so i was able to win the both uh, awards i mean it's a real achievement as a msc student so that is why I tell you, if I, if you, I mean, doing research is very hard. You have to do the data collection. It's very hard to do these things and you have to write the report. And after writing the report also, it's better if you can publish that. I mean, if you can publish it in an international journal, it adds value to your research. If you don't present your findings in an international community or at least in the academic sessions then all the hard work you have done uh, will be a waste because you're not telling the world what you have found so just don't get scared there are all the professors all the consultants are there but they are a, they are very nice people because they know i mean uh, as a medical student when you present actually we appreciate uh, very uh, well because uh, i mean uh, it's a big achievement for your age so 
likewise uh, i started from my msc level and i am still uh, presenting in a say academic sessions still i am uh, this is uh, uh, from slma sessions and this is from uh, the recent uh, uh, college sessions uh, in 2021 i uh, uh, got the best oral presentation and also uh, uh, another research award uh, which uh, gave me 50000 as a cash award so it's possible i mean you if you present it well if you get prepared you can do wonders in this research world but uh, the only thing is you have to uh, get ready because uh, without any preparation it's hard to uh, i mean win these things but if you are very dedicated and if you uh, uh, plan it well you can uh, do anything you want so i am really happy to help you all and i am really happy that uh, you all are interested in uh, presenting the, your uh, research findings uh, because it's a really big big thing i mean uh, in the future also you may become a pediatrician bog or bp whatever the field you are in you have to do uh, research and you have to present i mean when you uh, become a senior registrar also for board certification you have to do a research and present it otherwise you can't get the board certification so it's not a easy path i mean uh, if you go do your higher studies also this research uh, helps you all. so i mean you get the basic knowledge from your uh, student days and if you do it well you get that experience and then from there onwards you can build up a good career for you all i mean you will, you can become a good consultant uh, i mean that, that is the target you all should have i i wish you all, wish you all, all the best uh, i mean now we can i think uh, you have uh, four presentations no two oral and two post post we can discuss that if you present uh, it now madam we have two presentations and one poster uh, shall we uh, give them some time for questions madam yeah sure if you have questions you can ask me How can we contact with you? Uh, it's okay, it's uh, email address. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I put my email address. Uh, I think I uh, shared the presentation with uh, your colleague, Kumudu. He will share the slides and uh, uh, the uh, presentations with you. If you have any problems, in the future also if you need any help uh, you can ask from me i mean i worked as a registrar in the faculty so i had three research groups uh, so i mean udara's batch they did the oral presentation as well i'm really happy because uh, whatever the thing you can do for a supervisor to show your gratitude is doing these presentations i mean the hard work should be shared with the academic community that is what we hope uh, that students will do uh, that's what uh, by what we expect you from you all so i think uh, supervisors will be more than happy to help you all and i i'm also uh, willing to help you all if you uh, make your presentations and uh, if you need any feedbacks i can give it to you all you, all, uh, you can ask any questions as well Um, madam, is there any way to find out any upcoming academic sessions? So, uh, usually in the uh, from the colleges, they share the uh, information with colleagues. Uh, I think from the internet you can find. <coughs> uh, recently, now uh, College of Community Physicians are having their sessions. I mean, 
during next two days and uh, you can i mean if you know uh, colleagues in i mean if you have done microbiology the, those sessions are also kind of going on these days like by uh, registrars senior registrars they also know and just uh, type in the in the web and find whether uh, they have any college sessions uh, recently then you can put your abstract and uh, do the presentation usually they don't care whether you're a medical student or not they they, they you they put the abstract to a panel and select it uh, you can very well present in any of the session Uh, Madam, I think uh, that's uh, it for the questions. Uh, thank you very much once again, Madam, for your uh, information. Shall I uh, share the presentations now? Yeah, sure. So that you can go through them. Uh, Madam, can you see my script? Yes. yes. Uh, so, Manuel, this is one of the presentations to the Sinon College of Physician. Uh, it's on knowledge, attitude, practices, and factors. It is a Sinon from Convigilians and Anders Graduations. It's important that we have Anders Graduation, which is among young doctors, which is better to ensure that we have a young doctor's extraction. Madam, shall I share with you the two slides one by one? Sure. Now here, uh, the slide is a bit crowded, but uh, what are you going to say actually in this uh, slide? Uh, as I told you, uh, put the slide number and write in another paper what exactly you are going to tell in this uh, slide. Because you may not have enough time to read all the stuff here, whatever the thing you are planning to tell. I mean, I told you, I showed you an example effects i have written a lot of effects but i said only physical psychological like only the topics likewise uh, whatever you are going to tell exactly in this slide you can uh, write in another paper you call it a script and uh, make another script and practice it uh, uh, to be presented within seven minutes so whatever timeline uh, it's given to you Okay, and Madam, shall I move on to the next slide? Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, go to the previous slide. Uh, that's all you talk about methods. Mm. What about your questionnaire? Whether you had ethical clearance? And um, what else did you miss? Uh, methods uh, section, you need to have more, some more slides. I mean, uh, what is your inclusion criteria? What is your exclusion criteria? And uh, you have to uh, talk about your study instrument and Either if if there's a scoring method, what is that scoring method, and uh, what from where did you get the ethical? How did you what is the SPSS version you used, and a chi square test was used to analyze these uh, two groups. Likewise, uh, methods uh, section needs to be improved. Only one, only three sentences is not enough. Um, I will share, uh, share my health literacy uh, uh, slides with you all, that presentation slide. So improve this using that uh, slide, uh, that uh, presentation as well. Okay.
with this you can't uh, get any information uh, you have to write something about this results so what are going to madam we are only uh, the student who is actually presenting it uh, will not be presenting right now uh, but, uh, but if you can give your in like a uh, input on this they can improve and we yeah. can also present uh, likewise i mean if if it is uh, like uh, here now you're presenting your uh, knowledge score no? so what are you going to tell here you have to have some uh, details here uh, knowledge score Uh, are you, uh, going, what are you telling to the world that from this uh, resource? Okay. Then to the next uh, slide. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, uh, here also uh, go to the previous one. Now, if you uh, from the left side, you uh, again put the resource. Now, if you put one slide earlier, uh, telling that you are going to this resource section, then you don't need to put always resource methods uh, in a side because it will consume your uh, space in this slide, and uh, you can. Uh, the, uh, in vain, your um, space is taken a lot for this uh, results uh, work. So you can remove that uh, part. And uh, for the beginning, you can put now when you're moving from methods, you can put methods and write methods and then put a slide as results and then talk about results rather than having all in each and every slide uh, that you're talking about results. It's, uh, it's in vain. I mean, the spaces are not uh, used very well. Uh, go to the next one. Okay, here also statistically significant associations. Mm. Uh, this is also okay, but uh, I mean, if you can present it, uh, shall I uh, uh, give me the sharing option here? I mean, uh, can you see this slide now? Now here, uh, associated factors, like in a very creative way, whatever, I mean, without just writing your uh, things in a dull manner, you can put some colors and bullets and put your findings uh, like this. Okay, uh, then go ahead. Something uh, you should be very quick. Yeah, uh, you should be very creative. I mean, always think of, uh, about uh, how to improve the slide uh, when you start. But when you uh, go through it again and again, you get uh, more ideas on how to improve the slide. Uh, you can put some pictures. Uh, likewise. Uh, Okay, the next one. Okay. Uh, 
uh, yes, uh, good. I mean, this is my personal view. Rather than putting this conclusion and recommendation in the left and getting a lot of space for that and putting jumbling all the things to a right uh, like this, I mean, it's not using the space wisely. You can put the conclusion and recommendation, I mean, you, you can put in another separate uh, uh, slide and then uh, details in the next, next slide or put a heading like conclusion and recommendation. And under that, you can uh, put the put your findings. Okay, next one. Okay. Where's, where's the references? You have to put references. I mean, at least in a one slide, in a small font, these are my references. You have to tell that one word. Otherwise, you forgot that part completely. And are there any limitations? I think there was no slide on limitations, no? I mean, I think no, you no. usually take 100 or 101 sample size. It's not adequate, no? So as a uh, limitation, you can put that uh, from your um, research. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, all the other... Uh, did you have a slide on your objective? No, no. Objective and justification. Justification and objective. You didn't mention anything, no? You have to add that as well. This is the definition. So why you did this study? I mean, in your literature review, you must... Um, you may have some adverse drug reactions are uh, reporting uh, so much uh, in this uh, uh, era or something like that. Why did you do this research? I mean, you write a justification for your research, no? So, actually, why you did this research and what is the research gap? You have to present. So, that is why I did this study. And this is what, what I found. Uh, and one slide on uh, justification as well. Okay, overall, the presentation is good. Uh, but you can add some pictures and uh, format, uh, uh, format this a uh, little bit more. Madam, shall we move on to the second presentation? Yes, Uh, Madam, this is also a presentation for the Ceylon College of Physicians. It's on level of anxiety during the COVID-19 pandemic, factors associated with it, and coping mechanisms of grade 9 female students in, in two selected schools. Uh, in the title, you don't have a full stop. It's a rule. Uh, don't make uh, those uh, uh, mistakes when you first presenting. Uh, remove this uh, dot now. This is good. Now, there's an introduction. Yeah, then you have to have the objectives. This is very scientific. Now, can you uh, get the, understand the difference uh, from two presentations? Now, uh, they, now, there are so many presenters presenting in this uh, academic session. So the quality of the presentation uh, will be compared among these presenters. So it should be very, um, very well uh, scientifically presented. So like 
present the objective. Okay, good. This one is good. Okay. I mean, so in the sample size, you can put the number, total number you calculated. Otherwise, we don't know from, uh, I mean, you did it in a sample of 10 or 15 or 100 or 1000. That should be there in the sample size. Okay, good. This is good. Now, here, look at this now. They have uh, mentioned about study instrument. What are the instruments? What are the sections they have? So now uh, earlier presentation, we didn't uh, know, I mean, what is the tool they used? Uh, uh, how did they gather this information? With the, now here they have used CPAS, a validated questionnaire in Philippines. So these details should be there in your presentation. That reflects the quality of your study. If you have uh, used a validated questionnaire, that means your research is ve ve very well sound. If you have developed a questionnaire, uh, that may have some problems. So likewise, you have to show your, uh, the way, the rigorous methods you used in the presentation as well. A modified brief cope tool. It's also a validated tool now. When you present this, if I am a judge, I know ah, this is a, a good study using validated questionnaires. Okay. Ethical clearance. Here they have mentioned. Don't uh, miss any part from your presentation. Okay. Then pre-testing also you have to mention at least even a word about that. Okay. Good. I think uh, if you present uh, in the uh, first, as the first point, no social demographic factors were significantly associated. Uh, I think uh, it will, it's like, uh, a negative point you are stressing to the whole world. I mean, without telling, uh, you can talk about the factors uh, which were associated. Uh, remove that line and keep the positive findings. No need of the first sentence. Okay. Good. Okay. I mean, you, I mean, you can uh, see the difference in the results. Now they are giving a graph and uh, they are showing the uh, p-value uh, with the associated factor. Now, this is a very good presentation, very scientific. Now, if you present like this, you will get more marks because it's graphically clear and you can get a lot of information there. Okay. Okay. And here also you can uh, put the preferences and acknowledgement. Those things you, uh, you have to include. Mm. Uh, Madam, uh, next we have a poster. Uh, did you present uh, the recommendations there? Conclusions I can remember, but uh, recommendations? Uh, yeah, if you have any recommendations, I can. I think you can add another slide on recommendation as well. So because uh, after you find something, you give a recommendation. So how are you going to implement this? 
uh, research finding. So it will be a complete presentation uh, with uh, acknowledgement and uh, references. Okay. This is a very good presentation. Madam, can you see? Oh, ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a post on knowledge and attitude towards LGBT people and their healthcare needs among medical officers in two selected hospitals in Sri Lanka, also for the College of Community of Physicians of Sri Lanka. Uh, this, uh, you're going to print this or uh, this is, uh, uh, how are you going to present this? This time, uh, it's a physical event. You have no yes, idea. It's, it's physical, madam. It's uh, they did, physical. Uh, did they ask you to print this? Or uh, do you have it in a screen, a big screen, TV screen? Uh, madam, it will be on a screen. Ah, okay. Now, <laughs> uh, you have, did you, uh, you can't enlarge this. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, now Hello. better. Now this slide is a bit too crowded. I mean, we have to, uh, you can uh, put some, uh, bullets and points uh, so it will be much clear uh, in the presentation you don't have to write the whole thing i mean the key points uh, only you can uh, mention there Now here, uh, due to various reasons, uh, uh, sexual minority is subjected to discrimination. Uh, sexual minority is subjected to discrimination within the society and healthcare settings. Likewise, don't put all the things, words, and then you can put it in a bullet, highlighting the, uh, uh, the keywords. Okay. Now here, associations with attitude. These social demographic factors like these, these things had showed no association. So that's not needed. Anyway, uh, the negative things you don't have to highlight. There's nothing to tell. No? So we usually, uh, now everybody knows that you, you take the social demographic factors and uh, you check the associations uh, 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 accordingly. So if they are not significant, you don't have to tell about that, but you have to stress the 
factors that become associated factors. So uh, this uh, first whole uh, social demographic part, you can remove that part. Now, associations, you can put uh, two, how many points uh, people who consider themselves to be religious, uh, negative attitude. Uh, uh, you have only one, you can put one uh, bullet and uh, tell your association factor. Okay. Yeah, here may in this uh, presentation, if you don't have uh, enough space, uh, you can omit this uh, uh, your references as well. Uh, it always depends on the presentation. I mean, sometimes you may not be able to put all the things. Okay, this has limitations, but uh, uh, now make it small. Uh, the flow is the problem. Uh, uh, you go from background objectives. Uh, you go, go from here, this side, background objectives. Then you go to methods. Then you can't come to the limitations because limitations come to the end. Uh, I mean, otherwise <laughs> the flow will be interrupted, no? Results, conclusion, uh, after conclusion and recommendation, you can get the limitations. Or is uh, when you present, uh, uh, go from background objectives, methods, results, and you can show the post and present. No? So then come to the limitations at, at the end, after the conclusion and recommendation. Or else, if you have time, just try to maintain the same flow. Like um, the introduction, methods, results, and conclusion, likewise. Uh, this is good, overall good. Uh, uh, I mean, it's uh, better if you can put references also to this. Uh, it makes it uh, complete, but with the space, I think uh, it's hard to do. So I think this, uh, this is okay, but uh, uh, like in the results, uh, remove those uh, negative uh, factors. And um, I think all the sections you completed. No? Yeah, wait. Did you mention about anything on uh, analysis, data analysis? No, no. Uh, you can uh, point, uh, put one uh, section in methods and mention how you analyze the data. I mean, chi-square test or what, what is the uh, data analysis you did? Yeah, that's good. Uh, okay. Uh, try to improve those things and you are ready to go. But here also, remember, you have to present this uh, in this logical frequency. 
uh, think that the judge will come to you. So what are you going to tell uh, regarding your post? Starting from the background, then you go to the objectives. So in the background, you highlight the research gap. So you did this research. So you come to the objectives. Then you describe the methods. And then you go to the results and finally come, uh, come to the conclusions and recommendations. Likewise, in a logical way, when you present it, uh, they will ask any questions at the end. You can, I mean, uh, sometimes uh, the post presentation is very challenging than the oral presentation because in the oral presentation, you talk, uh, you practice it, practice it and present it in a, like in a slideshow, but here uh, you have to point out to your post and present. And also, uh, usually judges' comments spend a lot of time with you because they go from uh, one to the uh, uh, other. No? So in an oral presentation, uh, they have, if they have three minutes, they just uh, finish it within three minutes and go to the next presentation. But when in the post presentations, they uh, have uh, some somewhat, it, it is re uh, relaxed. They have time to ask questions. So uh, you have to go through your presentation uh, and get ready. Uh, I mean, uh, you have to have a clear uh, idea about your uh, actual uh, research. I mean, if you uh, have a printout of your research, you can take it and um, keep it with you. If, you. if they ask any additional questions, so you can refer to that also and get uh, prepared and go, you can present it very well. Don't worry me. Uh, they, they are very helpful. I mean, all the people who come to judge, they know uh, your level. I mean, your uh, medical students level. If you're presenting, if a MSc student present, they will ask from, so mostly, I mean, in, our, in my presentation in the college, they, I, uh, used uh, logistic regression for the data analysis. So they asked me about uh, the regression, I mean, linear regression and logistic regression. Likewise, when you go to the MD level, you do a, a bit of a higher statistics. So if they want, they can um, ask questions on that. So, but at, when you become to, when you come to that level, you know how to ask because this is your study. This is what you have done. So whatever they ask, you can uh, give uh, any answer accordingly. So don't get uh, frightened. Be uh, confident and do the presentations very well. I wish you all the luck and good luck. <laughs> I think uh, uh, you may be able to present it very well this time. Mm -hmm. So that about wraps up our session on creating an effective oral or poster presentation. I take this opportunity to thank Dr. Budini Hera Denora, who connected with us all the way from Australia despite her busy schedule and for imparting a vast amount of knowledge with us. Thank you very much, madam. Okay, thank I you. I also thank I also thank thank Dr. Dirsh, Dr. Yasa Sevan to success. Thank you. Recording stopped.